Hi, my name is Ross Burr. Welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to be upgrading my Harley Benton bass. I reviewed the Harley Benton PJ4 in my last video. It was a gift from a friend and unfortunately it had been lying around for a while until the bridge got like loads of rust on it and I really don't like the pack guard. So in this video, we're going to be looking at changing the bridge in your bass and also changing the pack guard. So when it comes to upgrading your bass, you are going to need to have some measurements. You can either look up your bass online and you should be able to find them there or you can get yourself a little handy pair of calipers for some digital measurements. You're going to need to measure the string spacing. That is from the middle of your thickest string to the middle of your thinnest string. You're going to have to measure your whole bass bridge and you're going to have to check how many screw holes your bass bridge has as well. This ensures that when you go online you can find a pretty good replacement that literally just slots in. Now you can spend anywhere from about 20 quid to about 200 quid on a bridge for a bass. The upper end ones I would say the only thing you're really buying is a little bit more reliability and maybe less chance of rust over the years. Apart from technique most of the tone coming for your bass guitar is going to be your pickups and your amp and your speaker combination. That's kind of like the main kind of core of how your bass sounds. Your bridge will have a really really minimal effect same as your nut as well. When you're replacing the pick guard you can try and get one that completely slots in. Now unfortunately today I just bought a PB one because I couldn't find an appropriate PJ one so I do have to drill an extra hole for that extra control. If you want to spend a little bit of time you can count the amount of screws that are around your bass guitar and you can check those measurements as well and hopefully you can get one that slots just in. Now if you have a budget bass and not one that's a recognizable brand like Fender or so on you will struggle to find one that's you know an automatic slot in and you may have to drill a couple of new holes in your body to hold that pickguard in place it's not all that bad because obviously your pick guard covers up the old holes as well so if you're like me and you need to drill in an extra hole I'll be showing you how to do that as well which brings me to my next point. The tools that you're gonna to need. You're gonna need a screwdriver or a power drill. Be really careful with a power drill because you can split pick guards, etc. and you can like take the heads off screws and things. So only use a drill if you're really confident using one. You're also gonna need a set of nippers for breaking your old bass strings. You're going to need new bass strings. You'll need a little spanner or kind of ratchet set as well because you're going to be taking the nuts that hold in your controls on your control plate. Finally, you're going to need a new bridge. You're going to need a new pick guard. And you're also going to need a tuner as well because in this video we're going to be going through setting it up. Obviously, you're putting in a brand new bridge. It hasn't been set up. It's coming straight from the factory. The intonation will be way off. The action will be way off as well. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take the strings off this base and we're going to treat the neck as well with a little bit of lemon oil, give it an overall clean, and then we're going to replace the pick guard and then we're going to move on to putting in the bridge. Okay, first of all, I would recommend having your base sitting on a table and maybe have something underneath to support the neck. You can get neck stands, but you know, a rolled up t-shirt or anything else will actually help support that neck. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to loosen these strings and just get them to a point where they're quite floppy and you can kind of grab them like that. I have an unbelievably large set of nips. So this is the reason why we loosen them first. If I was to do this while this was in tune, you could take your eye out or lose a limb. Now we just uncoil them and remove them. Next up, we're going to just feed them back through the bridge. Before I go any further, what I'm going to do is I am going to oil this bridge and also what I'm going to do is I am going to add some graphite to this nut. Now putting graphite in the nut, you can just go along with your pencil into each nut slot and deposit some graphite. It doesn't need to be a huge amount in there, just give it a couple of wipes and it should be fine. On these smaller ones you might find the graphite builds up on each side, you can kind of just push them on into the hole there. You can buy actual nut lubricant but graphite does a great job. I've been using graphite for years and it's completely fine. Next we're going to be oiling this neck. People get obsessed with oiling it all the time. You can't oil these too much, um, so just take it easy. This is the oil that I like to use. It is called Parker and Bailey Lemon Oil Polish. This will last a absolute lifetime. Um, it goes really far. I far much prefer to spend all that money on Dunlop Lemon Oil. The lemon oil you're using on your neck is not 
like the lemon oil essential oil it's basically a mineral oil that's just lemon scented i'm just using an old t-shirt here you can use an old rag try not to use anything where the material might come off onto the neck i'm using this white one so you can actually see some of the grime that's coming off this neck is not too dirty at all if you find that your neck has a if you find that your neck has a lot of grime on it you could scrub it with a little toothbrush you can use zero grade steel wool, but because of your pickups here, you have to be really, really careful. So you'd have to tape all of your pickups and your electronics off. So you make sure that none of those little iron filings go in there. Personally, I wouldn't want to take the risk. You could take your neck off, but then you're gonna to have to put it back on again. So I just use a old toothbrush and get scrubbing. When you are adding lemon oil to the neck, you can add too much. You don't want your neck to be sodden. Literally just a little pour on the your rag and then wipe it on and then make sure that you wipe it off because that wood is quite porous and it's going to soak up the oil that it needs so after you're done just give it a good wipe down make sure you get in between those frets too because that's where a lot of the grime exists and that neck is looking almost brand new just to show you the grime that came off because everyone likes a bit of dirt that is what came off that neck Ugh, disgusting. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this pick guard. I am going to use a drill because I'm super lazy, but I really do recommend not using a drill. Um, what can happen when you go to put another pick guard in is you can end up splitting the plastic if your drill is set to being too powerful. Even if you got screws with your new pick guard, do you hold on to these because they are like hen's teeth. And now that these screws are out, the next thing we're going to have to do is remove these controls. These ones and this Harley Benton literally just pull up. Other types of knobs might actually have a hole and there's a little Allen key screw in there that you might have to undo. So now we just loosen up these nuts on here and then these will be ready to come off. Again, make sure you hold on to these because they can disappear really, really easily. I recommend having a little jar with you while you're going through this process. And lift up from the back and then pull. So what you might notice as well, and you'll notice this in your own base, is a lot of dirt and grime kind of gathers where the pick guard meets the body. You can just give that a wipe down with a cloth and it should come up quite well. Now, when you get your new pick guard, you will notice that it's got a plastic film over your actual color. This is already protected and you should keep it on during installation. Next on what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this. Look at that, they don't even move. So grab your drill. So now I've got my new bridge. Basically what you want to do is you want to make sure these are back so you can access all those both screw holes at the top. We've got our new pick guard on and we've got our new base bridge in place. The next thing for us to do now to this base is put some strings on it and give it a setup. So first of all, we're going to feed our base strings through here and we're going to take them up to the headstock. I recommend putting all your strings on first and then you can worry about the top end then. Now we're going to put our strings on our pegs and we need to cut this length of strings so we don't get too many winds here and it messes with the tuning and we don't get too little either where you might have a chance of it popping out. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure one, two tuning peg lengths and we're going to go anywhere between that one and two points. So I'm going to cut mine here. Then I'm going to poke the string into the middle of the tuning peg and I'm going to grab it and wrap it around. All your strings should be wrapping around this way. And then hold that string because you want it to wind from the bottom up. And during this stage, you just want to get those strings on where there's a little bit of tension on. Don't worry about tuning just yet. Next one, I'm going to cut it about here. One thing you do want to make sure is you bind the right length of bass string. You have anywhere between a short scale, a long scale, and an extra long scale bass as well. So make sure you're buying the right one. Just hook that underneath your string tree. So now the strings are on. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our string height and our saddles. We're going to check the truss rod and we're going to set the intonation. So check in your truss rod, put your finger on your first and put your finger on like your 15th fret and you're going to look at the space in your ninth fret and it should be the space of a credit card. If it's not, you're going to have to adjust your truss rod. So if you're looking to adjust your truss rod, it's quite easy. These imports usually take about a four millimeter Allen key. Some of the official Fender ones and all, that'll be an Imperial. And basically what we're going to do is 
you can turn it towards the thicker string to the base and that will tighten the truss rod and over this way we'll add relief towards the thinner strings. I recommend looking down this way and it'll be righty tighty lefty loosey. It's time to adjust the string height. I recommend doing this while the bass is on your lap because obviously gravity is having an effect on these strings. But take your little allen key, put it in those little grub screws and if you screw it in that will raise the string height. If you screw it out, that will lower the string height. There is a measurement that comes from Fender for the bass guitars, and that's about a 2.4 millimeter measurement at the 12th fret. I will show you how to do that now. Okay, so you can use a carpenter's ruler here, um, making sure it starts at zero. But what I'm gonna use is this little string gauge, and I am gonna to come to the millimeters because that's what I work in. And I'm gonna line it up at the 12th fret and I am going to raise my bridge here until this meets 2 point, about 2.4 millimeters. At the minute it's only at one millimeter so I've got quite a way to go. If you're finding that you can't get this big enough, basically what it means is your neck is going to need a shim on it down at the bottom of the neck pocket and that'll lift your neck up and that will help it get to where it needs to go. This is almost doubled in height and that's because it's a brand new bridge so we're going to set the height for all the strings so they follow the curvature of the neck. You might notice that it might just be like a little bit too high or maybe a little bit too low so what you can do is just give it a little tweak until it feels quite comfortable so mine is just a little bit too high. Once you have your intonation set to kind of what you think it should be give it another tune and then play three and basically what you want to do is you want to play every fret and you're going to be listening for a little thing we call fret buzz. So you're going to play the string and it might go at the end. Obviously your string is going to be hitting a fret because your action might be too low. So give your frets a good going over. Just see some chromatic scales throughout your neck. Once that's done, we move on now to intonation. We're going to intonate the bass. So you're going to need a screwdriver and you're going to need a tuner of some kind, preferably a stomp box one. Get your bass in tune first. And next what you're gonna do is you're gonna play your 12th fret and look at your tuner. If it is flat, you're gonna to have to move this saddle forward. If it's sharp, you're gonna to have to move it back the way. So basically what this does is this changes the kind of the tuning of the 12th fret. Really what it does is it sets a midpoint for your string. And you can do that with a star head screwdriver. So mine is way too sharp and get pulling that saddle back. Once you adjust the saddle position, you're going to have to tune it open again and then check your 12th again. So as you can see there, mine's still way too sharp. So I'm going to give this a good few turns. If you're finding that it's hard to get this to move because of your string tension, you can tune it up, check the intonation, loosen the string, pull the saddle back, tune it up and then check the intonation. We've looked at replacing the pick guard, replacing the bridge, and giving the bass an overall setup. Now, I would not recommend that you buy this bridge. Reason being is going through the intonation process. The way this is designed, you've got your saddle and you got your screw. But the way this saddle was designed, this screw can only go so far. So there's only a certain amount you can intonate before you, it just won't go any further. I am gonna to have to replace these saddle screws with shorter screws or actually shorten these with a little Dremel tool as well. If you're a beginner, that's an absolute nightmare to do. You can 100% buy a bridge for your base that will just literally slot in and it won't be any hassle at all. I will put some links in the description for a couple of different price points on bridges. It will be an affiliate link, so if you use it, it will help me out a little bit. And I'll also put a link for a couple of scratch plates as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you can take something from it. If you have any base bridge recommendations, you can put that in the comment section and that will help people who are checking out this video a lot. Also, if you want to mention any mods or upgrades to base that you would like me to cover, I'll try and do that. So my name has been Rossborough. Thanks very much for watching and please like and subscribe. But until the next video, ta-ta.